here I've got a pair of um, Mono X 200s and one of these had a fault um, that was on the input section and then uh, both of them were for uh, service and uh, tweak up so you know to change the usual dry capacitors and uh, adjust the distortion and the like so that's been done um, and there's actually you know there's nothing in that material that's different from some of the other videos I've done so I've not recorded that specifically for this amplifier but I just thought we'd have a, a quick look around inside and uh, talk about the differences between this amplifier and previous generations and uh, show some of the quirks that's inside this amplifier and what we might what we might do to make some improvements and so it looks quite radically different inside when you take a first glance you know we, we see four big capacitors here whereas in the, the previous generation there, there was just two um, but when you look in detail what you find is that these are 4700 uh, microfarad uh, whereas the previous generation was a, a 10,000 um, and the reason they've gone for two capacitors is that these are higher voltage now they were 80 volts before these are now 100 and that's just because we're pushing the output stage a bit harder to uh, to have this label of higher power um, so they're actually at smaller value but there's two just in parallel and I mean that's good from ESR point of view um, and just a slight drop in capacitance is, is the deal there so it's not overly you know it looks dramatically different but it's not such a big deal um, and then you know previously I've shown in a couple of amplifiers how the low current supplies and it's all jammed in one area and um, uh, does tend to go wrong and when we look in here th this here again is the plus and minus 70 something volts and then plus and minus 15 and it's a little bit more spaced out here which is quite good and the other thing I note is that we've got 105 degree spec capacitors in here which is something you know, I've complained about a lot in some previous videos. Some of them are not. Uh, I still see some here that, uh, you know, are uh, 85 degrees, and these are typically the ones that go wrong. So when we look at the audio section, then the actual there's three main circuitry sections. There's the the gain section, then there's a buffer, and then there's the output section. And these are identical to the very original APA7 amplifier that's I, I don't know what date that was but it's many many years ago um, so it's not such a radical difference there um, the, the, the only real difference is that um, between the first and second stage uh, in the previous generations there was some there was a, a, a board in here with some big capacitors on it and that did the coupling between these two sections and in these amplifiers they're actually DC coupled and then there's a, a an op-amp servo that drives that DC to zero um, so that allows them to remove the, the big lumpy capacitors there and takes them out of the signal path as well which is no bad thing um, there is a little bit of feedback in that arrangement um, so that's another change there um, but as I say the actual sections are, are not any different at all so it's not so radical um, it's simply the coupling method and then we've, we're have you know we're driving the output a bit harder um, we've got a, a higher voltage transformer we get this extra heat sink in, and uh, that's how we get the extra um, power numbers from this thing uh, the other thing that we see is very different is this section here and uh, what we've got here, this blue item here is a switching regulator it's, it's an offline switching regulator and that's meant for a standby supply uh, it's a very crude kind of uh, you know off the shelf uh, component here um, and you know to see it in a high end audio product is a little bit concerning um, and I have seen issues with these in the past where the switching frequencies 
quite low and the actual um, junk that this generates actually appears in the audio output and uh, that's pretty disturbing actually and really what should have happened here is that this thing uh, should have been switched off when the, when the main um, transformer is switched in this should be switched out of line so that the junk that it generates just disappears um, and this stuff here this has got nothing to do with the user or the music what this is to do is to um, have the standby power less than one watt and that's that's just a regulation now for new products like this um, so none of this is for our benefit it's just to meet the regulations and uh, you know there is the potential for some uh, downside on the audio because of this kind of stuff so I will actually look at the spectrum of this and uh, see how it looks on, on these amplifiers and make sure that it's within levels we're, uh, we're happy with so we'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some other items here so let's take a look at the uh, frequency spectrum in this amplifier then and th there's no signal here um, but the first thing I, that catches my eye is that the the 50 hertz and the harmonics of 50 hertz seem a bit more prominent than they do on the uh, previous generation mono x so it's just something something kind of noticeable there maybe just means there'll be a, a little bit more 50 hertz hum that you'll you'll uh, perhaps observe when the signal level is low uh, anyway let's say uh, put the signal on here um, so there we go with the signal and I've got my usual plus plus 20 uh, dBV which is 10 watts and then we see the harmonics uh, and normally with the, the Mono X this second harmonic you can trim down somewhere below the third harmonic but what I find with the, the X200-300 is it kind of just d doesn't go below this level it kind of reaches a kind of plateau when you get to that point so generally the second and third is pretty similar um, but overall distortion is fine this is this is uh, you know within spec for distortion so that's all good um, right so let's what I'm going to do now is we'll um, extend the frequency spectrum so this is going to 20 kilohertz dead and uh, you know let's take it up and we'll look for the junk from the standby power supply here we are then we're looking uh, right up to 500 kilohertz here and we can see this this junk here in the spectrum uh, just above 100 kHz. That's that's the switching frequency of that standby power supply, and it's it's clearly seen in the output spectrum. Um, having said that, though, if we put our uh, signal on, and we look at the levels, you know, the level there is below our second, third harmonic, and obviously much much higher in frequency. Um, so at these kind of levels, I'm, you know, I, I think uh, there's. Uh, really uh, going to be a little influence in the audio side although I would have liked to have seen this removed you know ideally that supply should have been switched off when the main power amplifier comes on uh, and I, I have seen in the past that this switching frequency was much lower it was somewhere about uh, 40 kilohertz and, and at a higher level and uh, so that's kind of what concerned me in the past and, and I specifically went to look for that here um, but at these levels it's, it seems fairly harmless um, so there we go so that's that's the the spectrum of the Mono X200 so Cyrus in the in the past certainly they made a big noise about their cast chassis and how it had great benefits for thermal as well as audio and, and the fact it was non-resonant being a cast chassis it's all one item therefore the res resonant frequency is very low and uh, you know doesn't cause any microphonic issues or any of these kind of things so they made a big noise about that now I don't I don't see the wording for that kind of thing on the sort of current production products and also we see that in in some of the newer product ranges they've actually moved away from this chassis as well 
but certainly in the past they they made a big noise about this. So let's go and take a look at the we'll take a look at the web page and look at the wording that was uh, used in the past, and then we'll come back and look at some specifics inside this amplifier. Let's take a look at what Cyrus says about their chassis then, and you know if I look, if we look at the sort of latest generation products and we look at the information that's on the Cyrus web page, they, they don't actually seem to talk about this so much. But certainly in, in past years they made a big noise about the chassis and how it was a cast chassis and therefore uh, non-resonant and uh, you know super effects and all this kind of stuff. And here's, this is the Smart Power Plus um, which is it's an obsolete item now. But we talk about the non-resonant nature of the alloy that minimizes microphonic effects and etc. Um, and there's some other stuff here that doesn't quite add up to me, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how the chassis is going to eliminate coupling between the power transformer and this audio circuitry because they're in, they're both, you know, the transformer and the audio circuitry are both inside, so there's no, no physical uh, isolation between them. Anyway, that's a different topic. The the thing that amuses me is this non-resonant thing here and how, you know, super duper this is. Uh, and, uh, well, let's go and take a look at what happens inside this uh, uh, Mono X200. So, we've got, we've got these magic words that say our chassis is brilliant here and then we look inside this amplifier. And I've commented on this in, in uh, some previous videos on the power amplifiers the Mono X specifically. Um, these uh, 200s and 300s have got this additional heat sink on here. Uh, just because they've put a higher um, power output spec on the thing and so we've got the, this additional heat sink and then there's fans at the back that are blown air through that and we've got some venting at the front. So we, 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 we talk about this non-resonant chassis and then you see something like this and I've commented before that these items here, they look like a tuning fork and that's exactly what they are. Um, we talk about an anti-resonant chassis and then you come in here and you see this and this is, this is what's going on. And you know, it's probably not going to come across in the recording here, but that's ringing on for a good 10 seconds after I rattle it. And and so when you're playing your music, this is what's happening, you know. Your loudspeakers are doing the thing and, and this is what you're going to get. Uh, and if you look at the, you know, what you're getting today, the Mono X300 Signature, which top of the range amplifier and a very expensive amplifier, this is what you get. And I just find it astonishing that this is uh, the kind of thing that's going on. Um, and I think, it, you know, I would use the word embarrassing when I see this. This is just absolutely shocking. Uh, and, well, what can we do about it? You know, where we are where we are and they uh, what can we do about that? You know, we could stick some uh, damping material to it or uh, drill some holes in it or do something uh, to, to damp that down. But what I've done in the past and what we'll do here is it's very simple. Uh, just using uh, some nuts and bolts and washers and I've got a, an M6 bolt here. And what we can do is we just put that in here and just put a bit of tension between the upper and lower fins here and then we'll, we'll bolt this together obviously but that absolutely kills the the sort of ringing um, I'm holding this one because if I do that this one rings um, so that's what we'll do uh, I mean there's other things as well the, the capacitors here uh, are much taller and they've got a similar effect you know they kind of rattle around a bit um, and you know we should have some RTV or something that uh, uh, stops these from kind of rattling around. So we'll we'll go ahead and we'll we'll uh, make this little modification here. And of course it, it, this is completely undoable. I'm not uh, uh, doing any kind of permanent change here. You just undo the bolt if you want to 
they take off this heat sink to replace transistors or some other kind of service at a later date. But there we are, that's uh, uh, one of my uh, bugbears in these uh, latest generation amplifiers. So here we are, and that's both uh, uh, sides uh, done with the nuts and bolts. And it's, it's far from perfect, uh, it's just a, a curious situation we've got here. Um, but uh, anyway, you know, it's, it's much more like when you tap the chassis, it's much more like that now, so uh, far better situation than it was when we started. So we'll, we'll put the covers on these amplifiers now and give them a quick listen before they go back. Alright, so that's these amplifiers uh, together and they're all running fine. So um, we'll just run them in for a while, play some music, let them settle uh, before we send them back. Mm -hmm. Ha <laughs> ha! 